Hi, Suzerain here with another video, and this is going to be a bit of a preparation video for those that want to get some practice in for the upcoming gauntlet. If you aren't familiar with what the gauntlet is, it is a event created by me and Vero, and uh, we've started getting loads of sponsors and stuff like that. But it is basically a ultra dangerous hard version of Path of Exile, and the mods, which my editor can put on screen as well, but I'll list them out. 100% increased unique monster life, 70% AoE, 40% haste, so attack, move, and cast speed, 100% increased monster damage, and plus two projectiles. And this is in every single area. If you roll maps, they'll have this in addition to what's normal there. Now, in the past, mods have been kind of crazier early on because it's minus resist. So early on, we'd have minus 40 resist early on, which means that you would start at minus 40, which would make Act 1 and Act 2 a nightmare. It still will be a nightmare, but at least you can rest this cap a lot easier than before. This video, I just want to talk a little bit about what you can do to prep, talk a little bit about what some good builds are going to be. A lot of it is going to be a mentality change. And right now you can't really practice on exactly the mods. So I'll go in game and show you what I'm doing. What I'm doing at the moment, I am in Act 5. And once you get Arrogance, you can start simulating the damage because the 100% increased damage, that's not a mod we have access to. And arguably, you could add 20% increased damage as well. There are a lot of practice leagues in the racing discord, which we'll uh, uh, attach in the description. I have one as well. So if you're in my chat on Twitch, you can just ask man with hat for an invite. Uh, it costs six points to enter because we still have to pay for practice slots. Um, but either way, we obviously cannot simulate the 100% increased damage. So I'm reserving half of my life to simulate that. I'm actually reserving 60, 53%. So I'm doing Herald of Thunder with Arrogance. I think actually it would be better not to level Arrogance because uh, it, it more simulates, like it's more like we have 40% of our actual life because I'm not able to simulate the 40% haste either. So yeah, it's the same as having 800 life in I-5. It's very dangerous. You have to go very slow. And a big of the mentality shift is just for a lot of software players, especially the campaign is just a chore. It's just something you have to get through. But in Gauntlet, it is like a very big part of the campaign. And just getting to Act 4 is a huge achievement for a lot of people. Most people get stuck in Act 1 or 2 because so many things one-shot you. I, I can, I mean, we can just run out here and see how fast I die. And you see the damage is like pretty crazy from a lot of monsters. Where normally, you know, a champion, actually I don't even have Fortify yet. It's, it's easy, right? You'll be fine. You don't even need this video. But honestly, there's so many things that I'll one-shot you. Part of that is also because of the monsters fire two additional projectiles. And especially in the actual gauntlet, armor will be a lot less than it is in this. I basically have zero. Because the higher the damage is, the less armor does. It doesn't actually give you fist mitigation. That's just a lie that the game tells you. So a big, big thing is... Um, a huge mentality change. So you want to overlevel a lot. I'm aiming to be level 16 before Merveil, uh, level 24, 22 before Weaver. Act 3, I don't have that much of a struggle with, but like 30, 31 before Dominus. So there's a lot of your leveling areas. Honestly, leveling to like 8 or 10 in Submerged, not a bad idea. There's recipes, right? We have the, the weapon recipe, which is a rare or a blue rustic sash, a whetstone and a weapon will give percentage fist damage. And then you have, for ones, you will do a one alteration, a magic wand, and then you can choose. You can have a sapphire, a ruby, or a topaz ring, depending on if you want fire, cold, or lightning damage. And it can be white, blue, or yellow, depending on how strong you want it to be. So for a white one, it's an item level requirement of level 12. For a yellow, level 16, sorry, blue, level 16, and yellow, 20. So, you know, around Val, you want to, for casters, use the, the rare rings, you get really good flatted lightning or cold or fire or whatever you want. I will actually be switching to Explosive Arrow very early because we're going to farm a tabula. And the way we do that is that we search for Berserker and I'm currently experimenting with doing it in Submerged. I used to do it in Tidal because there's less unique that can drop there, but Submerged or Tidal are both fine. Submerged has like five or six more different uniques that can drop there, but you get one more unique. There's three like statues in submerged and there's two in tidal or coast either of those work and the reason for why it's so easy to farm cool rain and tabula in these zones is because there are barely any uniques there 
And I didn't explain this well enough, but remember that you don't need to farm low level areas. Some people that have watched my previous video was farming actually like submerged ledge and flooded depths for the berserker. If I drop a berserker here, I can go back on my other character that I made specifically for this. Uh, and as long as this doesn't get above level 15, it will still appear in Submerged Passage. In Arch Nemesis, I farm the majority of all my Coil Reigns and Tabithis and Tidal Island. Um, so you do drop a lot there, but I'm currently uh, trying in Submerged. But I, I, out of my Tidal Island farming, I had like 10 or 11 Coil Reigns and 15 to 20 Tabithis. So you do get a large amount there. And like I said, another big thing is the mentality of overleveling a lot. Like, it's so important. Um, once you get to Chamber of Innocence, this is like, honestly, you've kind of made it at this point because here it's such a nice place to overlevel. A lot of the other ones can get slightly tedious, uh, but honestly, the best way to look at it is you're mapping already, right? Dauntlet, you're mapping from the start. It's all about the same stuff that you're doing while mapping. You're focusing on upgrading your gear. You're focusing on upgrading your levels. It's not like the normal campaign at all. And that's what makes it fun for a lot of people. Once you get to Chamber of Innocence, you could level here to 54 or 56 without much difficulty. And you want to focus on gear here. I definitely wouldn't do Arch Nemesis in when you're zone level. I would do it in like when you're eight levels above the zone, to be honest, because it's very dangerous. I would completely avoid Overcharged, Hasted and Bombardier as well, unless you're feeling extremely comfortable and confident. And confidence is usually when you die. But right now I have just a random Grove Bow with attack speed. I have a Tabitha. Tabitha is obviously very easy to get. I'm very surprised I don't have a Cool Rain by now. And other than that, I'm just trying to get life on my gear. And I'm resist capped. And I'm not ready to go to next next area yet. As for builds, um, this is stuff I already have build guides for. I would just recommend those. So the Explosive Arrow Champion build guide I have, I would recommend that. And then the Seismic Trap Saboteur, that should be fine as well. That's a 3.16 guide, but I don't think anything changed. And a guide or a build that I don't have a guide for is Detonate Dead Necromancer. They're like the top three strongest. And I know some people are eventually going to be going for like Spectral Helix, whether that's Impale or uh, Omniscience, kind of depends on what you drop. But Omniscience shouldn't be the worst thing to, uh, to farm. I would not recommend Toxic Rain Champion. I'd say that's one of the worst things you can play in the gauntlet because you have to stand still to do damage. There's a lot of good choices. As for other Ascendancies, I don't super recommend them. They definitely will have doable builds on them. But uh, if you're just trying to get level 50 or 90, wouldn't super recommend other things. Something that's also going to be really scary in this one is you might be caught very off guard by the haste. So you kind of got to like, very often I will play on like feeling, right? I feel, I know how that Ziri Flame Blast acts and occurs, but now it, it'll be very different. So you just got to make sure you're not underestimating moving and stuff like that. Movement's important. You really want to get a Granite Flask ASAP. I'm about to roll mine. Armor is worse. I really should have taken evasion because evasion is better against normal monsters. It's a lot easier to dodge than to reduce the damage because since the damage is higher, you'll reduce less. Do not farm in Blood Aqueduct is crazy with multi -proj and you can get in instantly kill there so easily. So I recommend Harbor Bridge instead. And for Tabithus, just do Arch Nemesis and low level stuff. Either way, I hope this video helps you in the gauntlet. Thanks so much for watching. Sub if you liked the video, but more importantly, try to die less than I do.